Lord, may only your words be heard this day. Amen. There is a famous author who tells the story of his uncle on Good Friday. His family would gather uh, every Holy Week. And when it came time to read the Passion, just like what we heard, when they got to the place of Jesus' death, his uncle would weep. It was awkward. It was even painful as they waited for him to continue, but they waited. His uncle's only excuse was, I take the death of my Lord personally. This author would reflect and say, take it personally. That is something that the church has given up years ago. It is so easy to sanitize and domesticate the cross of Jesus. We gaze at this cross every Sunday. Yes, we might bow, but it decorates our walls. We wear it upon our necks. You can even get a nice earring to go around and accessorize. It has so often become just a symbol It's an an accessory. As tempting as it is to leave the cross there, if only for this day, I would ask that you might seek to see it for what it really is. The cross was a means of torture, of embarrassment, state-sponsored murder. Not only were you nailed to the wood of the cross, strung up naked, only after having been beaten, whipped, brutalized, spat upon, and exhausted from carrying that instrument of your own death, but as you hung up, you did so in such a way that you would simply choke to death before bleed out. The only way to get air would be to pull up on those nailed pieces of your wrists and feet. If you didn't die fast enough, your legs were broken with a club. As we just heard, Jesus was only stabbed in the side. But from there, your body hung, naked, abused, and left for all to see. This is what we wear around our necks, on our t-shirts, on our earrings. Every day but today, especially, especially today, we have crucified Christ. Our gospel, which although beautifully chanted, reminds us that our voice is amongst one of the many shouting, Crucify him. Crucify him. Crucify him. This text has often been a means by which we point to the Jews being the ones who have killed Christ. Let me be clear historically, theologically, that couldn't be further from the truth in either sense. This has led to all sorts of manner of anti-Semitism. My hope today, if anything, you will know that this is something that we participated in. That we participate in, and even then, was not simply contained to one people. However, today we take it a step further. Because not only do we process this instrument of grisly death down this aisle, up to this altar, but we venerate it. At the end of the service, we'll take it outside even, in the hopes that you might come walk the stations of the cross by our confirmand, stop and venerate this cross, maybe touch it, 
gaze upon it, and in another year, even kiss it. This cross, this instrument of death, this day is personal. It is perhaps the most personal event that has ever happened. It does two very, very important things. First, it tells us who we are as humans. And second, it tells us who God is. To be human, to be on this earth means that we know loss. We feel pain. We suffer. And because of our sin, the sin that we are born into, brought into, and stamped with, die period. That is the part of the human condition, and yet God, having become incarnate, choosing to be both fully God and fully man, dwelt amongst us, has chosen to live as one of us fully, to know loss, experience pain, to suffer, and remain with you through it all. This God of God, this King of kings, the Messiah has chosen to know your pain and not simply just know it, but dwell with you in the pit. There's always this great debate. What's better, a bare cross, symbolizing Jesus having already been gone, or a full crucifix in which Jesus typically hangs in agony? There's no right answer, but for me, for me, I I need a full crucifix. Because while it's hard to look at, it's tough to see the image of Jesus in agony, it reminds me of some simple truth that while simple is life-changing, Every time I take a look at it, I'm reminded that the one who matters most has accepted me even if the whole world has rejected me. I'm reminded that my debts have been paid and even more than that, have been given something more. Christ goes down into the tomb, trampling down death by death. And to those who are with him in the tomb, gives life. The crucified one is the risen one. And we are freed by him, not because we've earned it. We can't. Not because we deserve it. We don't. And yet, all the same, this is who our God is and what our God does for you and for me. And the craziest thing about it is, If we were the only people to have ever been born on this earth, Christ would have done it all over again. Just for you. For me. This is personal. This is so personal. And listen, I live by the motto, you have to go through Good Friday to get to Easter. And it would be so easy to simply lift high the cross, to live in that victorious moment and shout all of those things that we will shout this Easter Sunday. But not yet. The temptation to move forward to Sunday misses what this is. And without this, I invite you to gaze just a little bit longer in the darkness, to stare at the cross, to see the pain shed for us. And by doing so, realizing and seeing the truth of who God is, and pray that as Christ breathed his last and his spirit left, that on this Good Friday, that spirit might descend upon us and this world. To those who would say, my debt is too great to be paid. It's 
already been paid and given something even more. To those who would say that my sin is too dark, the stain upon my heart can never be removed, how foolish, how brazen to think that the blood of the Lamb could not wash away and has not already made you white as snow. To those who would say, I am in hell and I cannot get out, Know that the descent to the dead has already and is happening. And in that harrowing, that hand that we have pierced is reaching out to you even now. Take it. Take it. Take a look at who God is. The promise found from the hard wood of the cross, and Lord, hear my prayer. Take it personally. Amen.